Okay, so we've done a lot with creating the checklister, already around 20 videos and around 4 hours of content. But now let's stop creating the features and let's start testing it. This is the time where we could write automated tests for all the stuff that we have created before. Because usually what happens when you create like feature 2, feature 3 and feature 4, you may accidentally break feature 1, which often happens because you don't really remember what was the relationship there, what was the relationship between the features and stuff like that. And there are different philosophies how to write the tests. There's TDD approach where you start with tests. I'm not a big fan of that in practical way. I'm a fan of writing automated tests if you have the budget and if you have the time. Somewhere in the middle of the project where you have some kind of milestone of main features created and then you need to test them, you still need to test them manually. So why don't we write automated tests instead to not click every time all the links to check, but we will kind of hire a robot to do it for us. So I'm not sure if it will be a one long video or a series of videos around testing. I have a list of tests that I want to perform. For example, for administrator, let's test. The first example will be create the checklist group, check if it exists, and then update it and check if it appears on the menu correctly. So let's start with this one test. I will show you the beginning of the testing, how to do that in Laravel 8 project. It's really easy to start. And then we will go from there. And Laravel by default has a few example tests prepared for us, feature example test, which is basically go to some URL and assert that the status is 200. So test, assert is a different word for test. And we will do quite a similar thing, just we will act as admin. So we will create an admin user, fake admin user, log in as that, and then load the URLs and see what happens. So step by step. First, we create a test class, PHP artisan, make test. And let's call it admin checklists test. We will have a few methods inside of that. Test created successfully. And look at the default structure of a test. It has test example, the same thing as example test. So we can actually remove that example test at all from the code base. We don't really need that because we have that example. And then there are a few used things. Refresh database and with faker. With faker, we don't really need because we will load the data with factories that are already existing. I will show you that in a minute, but we delete that with faker. But refresh database, we do use, and this is quite important. We add use refresh database here, which means that on every launch of this test, the database would be refreshed, but not our main database. We will use a separate database for that. And it will automatically run the migrations for us. So we will have fresh database to start with. In here, we will create an admin user and do our things and test if they work. To use that refresh database, very important, it is to not use the same database. It's a really dangerous place because you may accidentally refresh your current database. So to take care of that, there is a file called PHP unit XML for settings on various things of environment variables. And these two, which are commented out by default, we need them actually here because we'll use SQLite database in memory. So we'll not have to create a separate database physically in our MySQL or whatever you use. For this simple task, SQLite is good and it will just create and load the data in memory and it will delete that database after the tests have been run. If you have any features or SQL queries which are different in SQLite and in MySQL, for example, date formatting or specific MySQL functions, then you probably should create a separate database, uh, call it somehow, and then use your DB connection and DB database from your config database, from this file config database, and create separate MySQL testing, duplicating those parameters with just different database name. But in our case, we will use SQLite like this. And what do we do here? In our admin checklist test, we need to create an admin user and we will use a factory for that. So admin equals user factory create. Now, user factory exists by default from Laravel. This is database factories user factory. So it creates the user with these fake parameters and password is password. But we need to override one thing. Remember, we have a field called is admin and we need to create a user with array of overriding is admin equals one. So you can use a default factory or create your own factory, but you can override any of those or add additional fields that you need. So we have admin, and then instead of doing this get homepage, we will do this 
get admin checklist groups and we will have a post request it won't be a get request it will be a post request so we're filling the form but important thing why do we need that admin variable we add acting as and acting as will automatically create a session like that user would be logged in so we don't need to perform the actual login with user and password or email and password we just create the user act as that and then do whatever url you want so we have to post to checklist groups and then the parameters of that post is just an array so we need to do name for example first group something like this we can check the checklist group controller i think i have that open so the store method of checklist group controller has the request and if we go to request there is only one parameter required name which is exactly what we will pass in our test so we post a checklist group and then what do we need to check we need to check that the response to all of that so assign that to response and we assert or test assert redirect to welcome because at the end of our checklist group controller store we redirect to welcome that is for now maybe in the future we will talk to the client and change that but for now we assert that it's redirected to welcome otherwise this would fail because that post failed for some reason and it would throw an error our automated tests and let's actually stop here and let's launch our test how do we launch that php artisan test and we have our passing test of admin checklist test also we have unit example test here which we don't actually need and let's remove that and we remove not only that but also in php unit xml we need to remove that from launching here so tests with unit will not be run we will have only feature tests the difference between feature and unit tests features is basically testing the visual features or urls or like clicking around in other words unit tests are more like for testing specific methods of specific classes whether they return the expected result or not in our case we will have feature tests only and let's relaunch that again and let's see if we have one test passed okay great but now to show you that it may fail i will probably do some error for example checklist group that url doesn't exist and if we launch that test we will see the error of 404 because that url doesn't exist so this is our first successful test and first failed test and this is the beginning of how you can test the whole application and let's finish the example of checklist group managing so we assert the redirect to welcome then let's load the page of editing that group let's copy and paste this acting as admin get of admin checklist groups let's fix that one as well then we have slash edit and between that there's a group id and how do we get that group group id and let's make a database query so group equals and at the same time we will test if it does exist so checklist group where name equals first group first then we do this assert not null so the group actually exists ophp storm underlines a lot of things here so probably it's this this is the syntax and then we do acting as admin get to edit form of that group and we don't need any parameters here for the edit so we delete those and then we check that response is okay response assert status 200 and also there's a shorter way of doing that you can do assert okay just like this so suit yourself i will leave it as 200 because it's more readable i guess or more clear for people who are not from laravel world and let's launch our test again and we have the past test and if we change for example not group id but for example this url it should fail again that url one edit doesn't exist so this is a proof that the test is working correctly and finally let's make an update of that checklist group so again we copy and paste a lot of stuff so acting as admin again we do put because put is the method for the update request admin checklist group slash group id so update of that particular group and then assign a different name so updated first group for example updated first group response assert redirect welcome it's the same thing let's actually double check 
what it would do after update. Also redirect to welcome. Okay, so assert redirect is correct. And then let's check if the data is changed in the database. Let's search for updated first group and also assert not null. And let's launch the whole test. And it's all passed, great. But if we, for example, change some update first group, it should fail with a different error of asserting that null is not null. And it shows exactly the line where it fails, so 39, and we can trace it back to here and realize that this is not working. But let's fix it. And now our test for managing the checklist group is fully working. You probably would say that we don't do deleting, so we do create, view, and delete. And for deleting, we will have a separate suite of tests because deleting the stuff from admin is pretty risky and there's more things to test, so it will come a bit later. Final thing in this lesson, let's create the menu test. So does that checklist group appear on the menu correctly? And we will have a menu composer used here. We have a menu composer that populates all that view with admin menu. And to test that properly, we probably need to refactor that. So we won't probably call this one from the test. So let's move all of that method into some kind of service that we will just launch as a one line from the test and from the composer. It will be a bit more convenient. So let's see if we have already a service, checklist service. Not sure if it's suitable, it's for managing checklists for user. Probably let's create another service of menu service, file save as menu service and rename class to menu service. And we will have a function of get menu without any parameters. And the result will be array probably. And then inside of that menu service, Let's remove all the contents. We just copy and paste everything from menu composer here. Okay, and we have, yep, let's import carbon. PHP Storm suggests that. So we need checklist group here, for example. Let's autocomplete that with PHP Storm again. And that service should probably return the menu and the admin menu as an array. So return array of admin menu something and user menu something for user menu i see that we already have groups here user menu equals groups and admin menu from what i remember is menu variable here on top so we do cut admin menu here and then paste that into composer here and instead of doing all of that we launch the service so menu equals new menu service like this and the method is get menu right and then here it will be menu admin menu and here will be menu user menu something like this and then we don't need anything here on top we just call the service and assign the results and in the service i think we don't need to change anything else oh of course Let's see if we didn't break anything. Let's load the page visually. It's still loading, all good. So it should be okay. Actually, let's try to register and see if the menu is working for a simple user as well. So slash register, fake filler Chrome extension will register and it loads for the user as well. So great, we didn't break anything, but now we can use that service like this to get the menu and check it from our test. We go to our test and at the bottom, we have get menu, we import that as PHP Storm suggests, and then we can check if our updated first group exists in the menu. To remember the structure of that menu, let's just do DD menu here inside of the test. And if we launch our artisan test, we should have that DD executed. And let's see the data. So we have checklist group items. So we have admin menu. And here we need to check if the updated first group is among the items. Since admin menu is a collection, we can use collection methods. So our menu is menu, admin menu. So this is a collection. And then we can do where name equals updated first group count, for example. And then we need to assert that this count 
So this assert equals, for example, one of count of those menu items. You can do assert not null, for example, or assert exists. Probably there are different methods of assertions, but this should work. Let's make it more readable. I will close the sidebar a bit. So assert equal of count of, let's remove DD and relaunch our test. And does it pass? Yep, it does pass. So we have that menu item in the admin menu. In the user menu, we shouldn't have that menu item because for user, we show, remember, we show checklist group only if it has at least one checklist. So as a homework, you can add another test assertion of checking that user menu does not contain the updated first group. But for this lesson, it's enough, I think. The lesson is getting longer. So this is the first lesson about how to test simple things. And in the next lesson, we will proceed with other tests for admin, get to user tests, and then one by one, we'll test the core of our application.